Hello everyone and welcome, this is Federico. Today we'll be going over the fast gradient sign method again. Today a bit in more detail because we will be actually looking at some code uh, very briefly to, to try and look at actually how to do this in practice. So if you uh, remember in my first video I went over this paper by Goodfellow et al. explaining and harnessing adversarial examples. Definitely watch that video if you haven't already. Today we'll be looking at this section but in code. So so pretty much just go over this diagram because I'm not sure I went actually over it in detail last time but if we have this picture of a panda and it's uh, classified correctly as a panda then we want to try to add some kind of vector alongside some scalar multiple of this vector such that it's misclassified in this case to a given right so if we look at it like from a geometric perspective right this is your point x then these are pandas and then these are gibbons um, what we want to do is first we find the sign of the gradient of the loss function, this formula here, which is right that that thing, right? So this is the sign of the gradient of the loss function, etc. <laughs> and then we write along it by some factor epsilon times this uh, original vector to kind of write maybe. Let me, um, let, that came out really poorly. So if we have again this x and then this. Uh, this is the initial direction, we write along it by some factor epsilon times the sine, and this is the sine, right? And uh, this is a vector, right? And so is this. Um, and then the idea is that if we go at a larger epsilon, we go deeper into this kind of space, and if we go in a shallower region, then we just don't go far enough, right? And this is what's, what we're trying to do. So if we look at the code here, um, talk is cheap, show me the code. Um, pretty much what they're doing here is um, they will use a pre-trained model, uh, the mobile net v2 model, which is pre-trained on ImageNet, right? So ImageNet is obviously the very famous data set on image classification. Um, as like, I'm not sure how many classes, but uh, uh, in this case, they take an, a picture of a yellow Labrador, um, I guess a Labrador retriever, and uh, and if you put it through ImageNet, um, it will, uh, or through this uh, pre-trained mobile net, it will correctly classify it as a Labrador Retriever with 42% confidence. Um, so uh, again, the fact that this is higher confidence than this image doesn't really matter. This method will, will always work. It's just that if you, I guess, it's more likely that if it's if it's a higher percent confidence that uh, you'll need a, a larger perturbation to to kind of fool the network. Okay, um, and then here what they do is pretty much what we were saying before. They look at the gradient uh, of the loss function with respect to this to this input image of this Labrador, and then they do the sign. Now again, the sign is just a function which uh, which I think I drew it here. Where if you have a vector which is positive, positive, negative, zero, then it just maps it to one, one, negative, one, zero, uh, and so on. So it just takes kind of like the sign of, of, of each, of the, the element-wise sign of each element. Yeah. <laughs> and then it returns this, uh, this sign gradient. Uh, and then what happens is the sign gradient is obviously the vector we were talking about, this, uh, this uh, unit. Well, it's not really a unit vector, but uh, you can kind of think of it as like a really small vector in the direction you want to go in. And then uh, just by plotting it, it looks just like some gibberish, but obviously it's information about the gradient uh, of the loss function with respect to the image, right? So this is the direction we want to go in. And um, yeah, so here I actually edited in some extra values uh, of epsilon. Let me just, uh, just to mess around with it, uh, let me just redraw it. But pretty much here what we're doing is, is we're actually taking this uh, vector addition and then looking at, uh, at what it classifies. So if we go here, uh, we have the initial Labrador image, which is uh, without any perturbations, again, with 42% confidence. Then with a small epsilon of 0 0.01, we get a Saluki, which is the wrong classification. I don't even know what a Saluki is, but you, you get that. Then you get a Weimaraner, another Weimaraner, and and so on. So as you can see, what what's happening here is is pretty much it's running through like multiple kind of decision boundaries, and then it's just doing bigger and bigger perturbations. So in this case, this would be like 
the golden retriever here like this this section here then this would be the saluki this would be the way marauder then there's maybe another one so let's try to add larger perturbations just just to mess with it uh, and re relook at it so if we add larger perturbations what you expect is that the image gets more and more distorted so even here like look, let's look at the distortion this is pretty much invisible distortion here you can kind of see it and then here you can definitely see it but as you can see after the way marauder here it goes into or sorry here it goes into the prayer rug then the stole and so on it's um it's pretty much going deeper and deeper into this direction and then obviously uh the last image makes very little sense right this is barely recognizable like you can kind of see the shape of the dog but you wouldn't even be able to tell right here you can kind of tell but still um then let's say our perturbation is too small so uh let's let's go for a really small perturbation obviously for really small perturbations you start getting into like numerical errors and stuff but i think this is fine so with a really small perturbation actually this is just three significant uh figures so you can't even see it um or three decimal places but um so this perturbation is extremely small and it's actually still a labrador retriever so as you can see our image our geometric intuition was quite quite on point because uh, we expected that first for too small of a perturbation this actually won't um, change the classification it does lower the confidence a bit again we are lowering the loss function um, so it will always kind of lower the confidence but uh, in this case it, it wasn't enough to actually cross the boundary so we ended up in something like here and yeah that's kind of all i wanted to say with this video just a very nice notebook uh, this is a tensorflow notebook um, yeah hope you enjoyed the video and uh, if you did um, stick around uh, see you next time <laughs> bye bye